The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the people no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he has chosen as his own inheritance. Father, this morning we dedicate our nation to you once again. And we say, Lord, we are yours. This nation is yours. It was dedicated from the very beginning, from the founding. And we thank you, Father, for your hand that has moved upon this nation. We give you glory and praise. And we we continue to say our founding doc, doctor or um, documents are true. And we we claim those as ours. No one can take them away from us. The Lord looks from heaven and sees all the sons of men from the place of his dwelling. He looks on the inhabitants of the earth. He fashions their hearts individually. He considers their works. No king is saved by the multitude of an army. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. A horse is a vain hope for safety. Neither shall it deliver any by its great strength. But behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Boy, can we remember that? Keep, <laughs> deliver their soul from death. Keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield for the heart or our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us just as we hope in you. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, that you have the plan. Lord, today we say we trust your plan. We say your plan is the best. We say your ways are righteous your ways are correct you're in everything you consider everything and everyone lord when you do your uh bidding when you do the things that you know need done you consider all of us you consider everything there's nothing that's out of your sight and we just give you glory right now and thank you for how you accomplish your work we ask you lord to that your gospel this morning will run quickly through the land through the land of america we ask you lord from the south to the north the east the west all the way around it lord we ask that your word would run quickly and accomplish much in jesus holy name we ask lord that through the nations through when there it when there is turmoil and shaking we ask god that the gospel is set on fire and runs quickly through the nations in jesus holy name we thank you lord there's a lot to accomplish but it's not a big job for you you have it and we thank you that your hand is mighty and able to save all those who call upon the name of the lord shall be saved and we agree with your word in jesus holy name and we thank you that the white man in white is standing ready <laughs> thank you lord to receive unto him those who will come so father we give you glory and praise soften the hearts of those who are tender lord this morning towards you we just ask god for great salvation thank you lord and can a nation be changed in a day we ask in jesus name thank you lord we want to see these things happen glory let's turn to daniel 9 and let's start at verse 20. Who would like to read this morning? It's so good to see all of you this morning. And uh, Marsha, the notes are right over here. Sandra has them. Oh, you got them. Okay, good deal. <laughs> I thought you were looking for notes. Okay, I've got one here if you need it. All right. Yeah, there's piles. Okay. Um, who would like to read? Anybody ready to jump in? Sure, I'll go ahead. Okay. So and you have the... Uh, but we have the tree of life. I, I've got the tree of we'll life. We'll take it. All right. Um, Daniel 9, verse, starting with verse 20. While I was still speaking and praying, confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, and presenting my supplication before Adonai, my God, on behalf of the whole mountain of my God, yes, while I was praying, Gabriel, the one I had seen in the earlier vision, came to me swiftly. 
about the time of the evening offering. He instructed me and said to me, Daniel, I've come now to give you insight and understanding. At the beginning of your request, a message went out, and I've come to declare it to you, for you are greatly esteemed. Therefore, consider the message and understand the vision. Oh, yeah, keep going to the end. Yeah. Okay. 24, 70 weeks are decreed concerning your people and your holy city to put an end to transgression, to bring sin to an end, to atone for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the holy of holies. Wow. So know and understand from the issuing of the decree to restore and to build Jerusalem until the time Mashiach, the prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. It will be rebuilt with plaza and moat, but it will be in times of distress. Then after the 62 weeks, Mashiach will be cut off and having nothing then the people of a prince who has come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. But his end will come like a flood. Until the end of the war that is decreed, there will be destruction. Then he will make a firm covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And on a wing of abominations, will come one who destroys until the decree annihilation is poured out on the one who destroys. Okay. It is powerful. <laughs> Amen. 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 Okay, so if you look at this piece of paper that has some color on it, we'll talk about this for just a little bit, the Daniel 70 weeks. And what we just read um, now I want you to look at the top and it says 50 BC um, to 409 BC before Christ so this was um, this is the 7 weeks and then the 62 weeks the 79 weeks then that ending at 26 AD when Jesus died then the 2000 year gap and then the Antichrist confirming the covenant, where it turns green. And then there's three and a half years in there, which is a half of a week. And then another half of a week, 1260 days again. Then the second coming, which says addition, and then there's an additional 30 days to reach 1290 days, which talks, it talks about that in Daniel 12. And this, was, this is a bit confusing. We talked about this last week, and so that's why I wanted to give you a chart where it's actually spelled out. So it says, the abomination of desolation, remember, will be at the middle of the set, the one week where it says Antichrist ends the sacrifices. So the abomination of desolation is at the three and a half year mark. And then Daniel 12, 11 says, and from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits, and it comes to 1,335 days. So the 1,000 extra 45 days. And it talks about that. Okay, so down below is a little bit more of a breakdown of just the tribulation, the great tribulation, the additional 30 days, and then the millennial reign. And we are today, we are not going to go into, um, we're not going to go into this in depth 
but I wanted you to have the chart so you could go ahead and look at it. And it breaks it down. So Danny, when you see in this, look at the gray section that says the great tribulation, three and a half years, 1260 days. Then look down at the bottom, it says the six seals, the six trumpets along the bottom. The abomination of, of desolation has been set up. And we really talked about that last week, the abomination of desolation. And remember the the, the triunity, the tr evil tri in it, tri unity. Let's just put it that way. They're they are in this for evil, and they are unified in evil. And what are they? The false prophet. Hello, the false prophet. And the beast. The beast. And the antichrist. Well, the antichrist is the beast. The beast. Yeah, the false prophet and the idol. Okay, remember last week we watched a video called The Giant. Do you want to go in and look up The Giant Project and you can see it? So the, the Giant Project is getting ready to go and it's not happening yet, just like we haven't seen the Mark of the Beast yet, but we are getting a taste, a foretaste of the things that are on their way, right? So we know that these things will happen but we are not there yet. And so we just want to be in agreement with the Lord when we see these things happen. He says, when you see these things begin to happen, pay attention. Don't lose heart. Look up for your redemption draws nine. All right. Okay, so that's, that's that. So I'll just let you put that in your notes. And that's a little bit of an addendum. Now... Because of the things that are happening today in our world, uh, with the things happening in the Middle East, can you believe that God sent us, <laughs> our brother Matthew, from that area, and our brother Ted, from that area, but brother Matthew was talking specifically about the Isaiah 19 mandate, and which is shocking for him to bring that to us right when he did. I mean boom, and then all this happens like it does this week <laughs> in Afghanistan. So we just sit and go, okay, we're catching a little bit of this. We must be a little bit right on time. <laughs> the Lord is on time. We're just trying to catch what's happening, right? So today, I want to bring a message, and I've never really done this before, so you're going to have to forgive me, but I brought... Uh, Mike's notes, Mike Bickle's notes, and I'm actually headed to Kansas City today. I'm going, wow. I'm going to Kansas City right after class, I, and then I'm going to go to Wichita. I Here I come. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm going to go to the house of prayer first. I called my mom this morning and I said, "Mom, I'll be there, but I'm going to the house of prayer first." <laughs> oh, oh, here yeah, I am. There you go. <laughs> it's going to be good. <laughs> here I come. Here I come. So it's going to be good. I have a question. Yes. If you don't mind on no. The, okay. So I see it plus 30 days and a plus 45 days. Yes. So I'm a little confused. I am confused, confused too. We we talked about this last week, and oh, it is confusing. Afraid, oh, so oh, I'm actually going to ask that question. Oh, okay. Because I couldn't find it. and um, But I may be able to find it, hopefully, when I go to the house of prayer. Because it doesn't give us the... It doesn't give us about that extra 45 days. Okay, uh, so I, I can also look it up. Yeah, here. let's all look it up. We'll if we can find it, we will week. revisit it. Because that's what I said, is I'm gonna, we're yeah. going to revisit it this first, and then I couldn't find anything, but I did find this chart. So that was, this is helpful. However, we're still missing another 15 days. Who knows what's going to so, happen? But how do we know? Where did I'm sorry? Somebody here said 45 days, so that brings us to 1335. That was at the the end of Daniel 12. Oh, so that's Daniel. Daniel 12. Sorry, I only know that because I did the math yesterday. 11. I was reading. Yeah. Okay, no, I don't apologize. I it's true. You know where it's at. So Daniel 12 is that 1335? Yeah. Where that? that uh, it was verse 11. 11. Verse 11. Yeah. Here. Daniel 12 11. Yeah. So we know there'll be a transition time in there. The 30 minutes is when, or 30 minutes, 30 days, it'll seem like 30 minutes, hopefully, but the 30 days is when, when God will be pouring out his wrath upon evil men. Um, and it will, be, it will be the greatest pour out of wrath the world has ever seen. Um, 
and but God will be doing exactly what he said there in Daniel 9 at verse 24 he's going to finish the transgression right. he's going to end the sin he's going to make reconciliation for all iniquity think about it anything you've been stolen from or anything else he's going to bring everlasting righteousness and he's going to seal up the vision prophecy and he's going to anoint the, the holy the holy of holies i loved how it said that in that in your bible <laughs> it's yes. right on yes. can i say keep those bibles because you cannot find them right now and i can't figure out what's no, going on kidding. no kidding did a lot you go of, to their organization i did and a lot of their a lot of these bibles i just found out yesterday i was trying to get a hold of jack hayford's bibles out of print, out of print, out of print, out of print. Yeah, go to the used, go to the used Christian bookstores. That's true. So if you can get a one used or whatever, get it. Well, they're not used; they're brand new. Okay. Well, they're going away. Okay. When did you get it? Oh well, yeah. Well, now they're out of print. So I'm telling you, find them. He's got a ton of stuff down there. Yeah, he does. The South Broadway Bible yeah. Store. What's it called? It, it's everybody called, knows. Uh, Christian, uh, used Christian, Book Christian Bookstore. Yeah, it's, it's a great it's store. Right, right, by, uh, right, yeah. right oh, by what? Hamden. Hamden, Hamden. Oh, right. It's like South, yeah, two South Broadway, two box right hand side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Side. It's a great store. I fully agree. So I, I, I go down there and buy. <laughs> For used Christian Bookstore. And I pray there's still. Has anybody been there this year? I pray yeah, still. Five and a couple weeks ago. Okay, you passed them. They're still there. Okay, good. <laughs> That's good to know. Yeah. So Broadway and Hampton is kind of the cross streets. So becoming a famine and Famine and our good ones that we love. But this one I can't find. I can't get hold of the people. I can't find it anywhere. So it's the, fa- the Tree of Life Bible. Yeah. Which I and I've been trying to find it. So if anybody it's finds really a source, good, let me know. It is. No, I was going to buy. I need to buy because the last time I bought, I bought a case. So it took me a long time to go through a case. They have they have them this size, but they have them also that is a different and it's larger. It's called I think it's a family tree of life. It is. It's also very good. It has some great pictures in it. Yeah. Uh, illustrations. Larger words. Right. Uh, more illustrations, and I really like it too. This yeah. one's good because my mom. Can Right. Right. <laughs> go go look. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, go find out if they're still open. So, okay. Okay. Now, let's get back to this. Now, the reason I want to bring this up, Mike taught this last week, and I feel like it's so relevant that we need to just go there. And I've never I've never taught on the marriage supper myself. So I'm going to use his notes. I was like, I can't do better than this. And this gives you all the scriptures right there so you can look them up and spend more time on it if you'd like. But it brings it up to today, what we're talking about now and what we will see in this. I believe in the soon future. We're just watching these things happen. Um, We're just seeing turmoil. Okay, when did we go into Afghanistan? 20 years ago? At least. At least. Okay, so remember, here's the other thing. Uh, Remember that Hitler began to rise to power in the 1920s. What was happening, he wasn't in power in the 20s, but he was starting to rise to power. Um, And, but nobody liked him at first. Nobody liked him. And there was a, you know, during the 20s, it was just, all these things were happening, Great Depression in the United States, um, things were happening all over the world, but Jew hatred was beginning to escalate, right? right? Um, the propaganda that came out against the Jew was overwhelming, breathtaking. If you go back and read any of the newspaper articles, you just, you just want to throw up. And because you can't believe that people would say those things about each other, okay? Say these things about another human, right? So then in the 1930s, he became, started to become more popular and uh, Nazism, you know, was rising to power. 
um, Hitler, I believe, I may have the numbers wrong, but it seems like there was only four years or six years that he was actually in power. He was voted in um, because he gave inspired speeches, <laughs> right? And this is how the Antichrist will rise. Remember when we talked about that, how the Antichrist, when he rises to power, he will give a demonically inspired, rousing species. You know, that, that will shake your fist in the air. Remember that? Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. Here we are. So, um, it will happen again. Propaganda was at an all-time high. Let's look at, um, look at this sheet on propaganda. Um, I, I think I read a little bit of this, but I listened to a whole program on propaganda a couple of weeks ago, and they were talking about how Sigmund Freud's grandson formulated how to brainwash or change a nation through propaganda. And um, they have put all this into place into what we're doing right now. Now, this was straight off the Internet, except I added a couple of notes in there. So, so it's not Christian at all. It's a secular thought process. But it says the first thing of propaganda is that you have to get everybody on the bandwagon. Um, and I'm just going to use the example of what we just went through last year. Uh, and you guys are going to have some thoughts on it. I actually have my pen. You tell me your thoughts. <laughs> okay. Do you remember when this very first happened? It was March last year. At least that's when we thought it was the first um, March. And um, all of a sudden, all of this stuff starts coming out in the news. And everybody, ABC, CBS, NBC, you know, Every single channel in MSNBC, public broadcasting, every single channel, including Fox, all of them, were saying almost the exact same thing. Now, Fox may not have been saying the exact same thing. Usually, they're a little bit different, but across the board. In fact, they put together, there were different people who put together boards of the local TV channels where they're saying the exact same script over and over and over again. Nobody's reporting the news. They're just simply saying the same monologue over and over, and it's one-sided. Okay, I, I saw it, and after three days, I'm like, if the news people will shut up, this will be over. We won't have this, <laughs> right? <laughs> Were we all saying that? It's like, if you guys will just be quiet, two weeks, okay, what? Two weeks, flatten the curve, right? Whatever. <laughs> that wasn't the truth. Okay. Ban okay, so let's get everybody on the bandwagon. Um, they locked us down, social distance, put, it, put the stuff, stickers on the floor, stand here. <laughs> We're all in this together, right? But stay apart. We're in this together, stay apart, six feet. But we're in this together. No, we're not. No, we're not. I was like, no, we're not together. We're apart. <laughs> you just told us to be apart. The whole country is apart. <laughs> don't talk to each other. Don't go out to your neighbors. Don't, don't go do anything. Okay, so it creates a sense of isolation for audience members who have not yet joined the cause. It appeals strongly to our sense of conformity. We want to belong to the group. We want to get along with everybody, right? Okay. Um, if you do this, you're a hero, right? You wear a mask, you're a hero. You go to work, you're a hero. If you're an a essential business, you're, you know, you're a hero <laughs> for going to work every day. Okay, is that true? If you have to tell me you're a hero, you're probably not a hero. You know, I know most people that did this during this time, they're like, I'm not a hero, I just go to work. <laughs> what are they talking about? But you can't say that, right? Now it's like, oh, don't say that. <laughs> okay. Isn't that what they were trying to teach us with the emperor has no clothes? Yeah. You say the truth out loud because obviously the king's walking around naked. Yeah. So here's the naked truth. Okay. <laughs> All right. S testimonials. Endorsement by well-known, well-liked celebrity, political figures, or other entities 
This creates a sense of trust and likability for the cause because of the person promoting it. Let's get the plain folks on board. Let's get those people who are nobodies, let's get them on board. Let's normalize the issue. This is, this is our new normal for now. Well, of course, they didn't say new normal for a time. They were saying two weeks, two weeks. Then there was like, well, we better do it another three weeks. Then it was, well, we need to go a month. And then it was, we better go another six months, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's escalated, boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. There was no chance for us to speak back um, or, or rare chances. They just kept jamming it down our throats. Um, getting the celebrities on board, were you shocked how quick they came out with commercials? I was like, wait, this had to be going on for longer than three days. <laughs> this was longer than a month or a week. They have commercials with celebrities. Boom, you don't just snap your fingers and make a commercial. It takes a lot of time, money and all that. This is, seems like a plan to me. What's going on, okay? And why are all these celebrities jumping out here and doing this and that, okay? Um, of course, I don't trust the government, never have. I remember when they said, don't drink whole milk, don't eat eggs, don't, right? I remember all those things. I'm like, yeah. eggs are like low the healthiest fat. thing. Right. Low fat was one of the biggest lies they ever told us. Don't yeah. eat butter, eat yeah. margarine, which is plastic. Yeah. My daughter calls yeah. it plastic liquid cancer, plastic. <laughs> liquid oh, plastic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I remember all these and I'm like, okay, I don't trust that. Yeah, it doesn't melt in your arteries. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't melt. melt. No, it doesn't melt in your arteries. And, um, but I, you know, I just remember thinking, if they're telling me these lies way back then, I was like, you know what, I'm not gonna get my health advice ever from the government. I made up my mind a long yeah. time ago. I will, they will never tell me what to do again, you know. I believed them for five minutes on the, on the uh, fat thing. I was like, well, maybe they're right. Maybe we're getting too much fat, you know, okay. Then, I mean, when the studies came out, they were like, boy, it's the exact opposite. We're not getting enough fat, and we need to get healthy fats, and we need to get rid of those fats, but we need to get the good fats. Eat butter, eat more butter, drink it in your coffee, right? I mean, it was like, <laughs> right? So, I, I mean, they tell us the exact opposite. So if they're telling me the exact opposite about butter, then make, you know, are they telling me the truth now? Well, I doubt it. Okay, all right. Let's get symbolism to connect to the audience emotions and transfer, okay? Name calling. This, is, this started happening, uh, well, fairly soon in, probably three or four months in, you're not wearing a mask in the store. You're gonna get screamed at. Um, and that was, I, I started watching things happen, and I'm sure all of you did right away how mean people became, how quickly being mean people came. And you could see him behind being just giving you the evil eye if you weren't, because I was like the last one to get a mask on and the first one to take it off. <laughs> and uh, never outside would I wear a mask. All right, uh, never. Yes, oh, hi, good, good morning. A friend of mine, I thought this was really cute, his son, had said that uh, he never wore a mask, never, yeah. through the whole thing. And when he would go into the store and people would say, oh, you know, I'm sorry, sir, do you have a mask? He says, oh, no, I can't wear one, I have CS. Yeah. And they were like, Clemson. oh, okay, <laughs> CS, common sense. Common sense, sense. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I have a yeah, good dose, yeah, yeah, good dose of common sense is what oh, I have, yeah. <laughs> Amen. You know, and, you know, because of the HIPAA Act, and the, yes. there was a, uh, there was a, a caveat that for the HIPAA Act, uh, because of the um, HIPAA started because of the uh, transgender, right? The whole transgender thing, right? But now it's actually working in our favor, right? Because they can't really ask if you tell they cannot us, ask. They That's can, right. They can or they can't know. They don't. They can't even ask. What is yes? Yeah. Right. Yeah. However, yeah. there are. I, I listened to uh, Bill De Blasio last night, and um, they have a zero tolerance thing going on in New York. They don't care. Yeah. 
it's they don't, it's like we don't care you will not go into a restaurant if you have not been vaccinated and um so one of the journalists on fox news came on and said okay so i called i think it was 40 or 50 restaurants and he said my friend has ms she cannot take any vaccination no matter what i can't she can't does that mean you will not serve her every single one 50 zero no we cannot serve her so I want you to see the discrimination that's gonna that is happening yeah, right yeah, now. Exactly. Yes. I just heard this morning that Israel has just invoked the mandate that you can't go inside any building unless you've had the shot. That's true, and that's been going on. And um, Israel, I think, was first in this. Plus, they are the first ones to say we have a hundred percent of our country vaccinated. Oh, yeah. And um, now I don't know that that's necessarily true. It's, it's I don't think true. they, I don't think, I don't think they, you know, you had somebody come from Israel. Yeah, Tell Mike us and Melissa that. are just here. They live in Israel, they live in Jerusalem. They said the outcry, the outrage, Good. the uprising was huge. Good. We're not, like the news tells you, you know, they're all, right. is that true? No. The, the people that were saying, you can't make me, it was, it was. Good. You say 80% are? No. She said 40% of the people were verbal. There was a verbal, not just the ones that were hiding back, but 40% no. Said, say no, you can't make me. That's now, good to hear. That's, I don't, that's good to hear. <laughs> that's good. I don't know about restaurants. I don't know. They were giving the purple pass, the green pass, that upset everybody, so they were giving the happy pass. Right. <laughs> happy Be happy about symbolism. this. Symbolism. Yeah, the That's exact the symbolism. Yeah. So, um, but but she said the outcry, the outrage was, well, of course. I mean, those yeah. that remember what happened in Germany, yes. anybody older who believed it or was rehearsing it, yes. you wouldn't do that. No. Yeah. So, the, what we hear on the news isn't always. Oh, no, well, of course. You know, I agree. The other way that, the, the way that they get their percentage for, for compliance, the way that they get their percentage for compliance is that they take how many vaccinations, how many vials of vaccine were purchased, and how many they have left. So it's not necessarily indicative of how many people have. Yeah, yeah, it's not. It's not really. And they have no way. They have not been tracking who's gotten the vaccine and who hasn't. Who's yeah. Tracking? Nobody's tracking. Nobody's tracking who got the vaccine. You don't have to have an ID to get a shot. No. So how can they? Yeah. Give you, I can have someone know my name. Who gets shot? Well, so anyway, so that's good news. I, I think that's good news on all points. <laughs> but anyway, I want you to see how the propaganda is because they are using the numbers. They're fudging the numbers all over the place because um, the numbers I heard from a different source and it started out, um, it was from a doctor and he said 70... I'm just going to talk about our hospital. 76% of the people that are coming into our hospital are, or no, no, no. All of the cases, out of all of the cases that we're having come in from this new variant, 76% have been 100% vaccinated. So, you know, the numbers, and this was a guy who, you know, was like, you shouldn't have freedom of choice on this. It's not, he wasn't like full blown, you have to get this shot. He was like, you have free choice. But he said, look what's happening is the people that are vaccinated, and that was, that's been happening across the board. You know, like football teams, the whole team will be vaccinated. Yeah, Half the team gets sick. So, um, yeah, as, among other things. But the bullying, I don't know. Good grief. I have a couple questions. Okay. So, one is, so like I got a call from the CDC Health Department on my home line. Oh, sorry. <laughs> saying and it came across CDC Denver or CDC Vax or something and my son actually got a letter from them um, in his case it was more or less a bribe you know to go get the vaccine and in my case I you know I have caller ID so I didn't pick up and I heard on the radio that they were calling so when you say they don't know and there are people who go, let's say, to King Supers. Uh, I think they do have their name and number, and they do follow-ups for the second shot. So I don't know if I, I, I would, would love to believe that, but I don't know that I do believe that. 
are they calling everybody to go mass? I have no idea. Did everybody here get a call? No. I don't know. So I know a lot of people who did get calls and even some people that were already vaccinated. So we I don't know. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? So who knows if they're, and I'm sure we got a call and I'm sure we, th I think somebody showed up at our door, but I guess that the people who were showing at somebody's door, they found out, let's see, was it Vermont or New Hampshire, something like that, and they, I didn't answer the door. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, they said it was so extremely unpopular, they immediately stopped. So listen, our voices are being heard and speak up loud while you can. Yes, yes, right, while you can, so speak up. Okay, name calling. Um, now they're saying things like, you're gonna kill someone if you don't wear a mask. Now they're saying this to children, which is really horrific. That's one yes. of the most abusive things I've ever seen. And, um, and this whole thing about having children who have a .00004% chance of even getting sick at all, all of them have to wear a mask in school. I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me. I listened to a thing yesterday, a study about that came out of, I'm gonna forget the university, but it was one of the big medical universities. And they said that the children that were born during this pandemic time have a lower IQ because they're not seeing the faces, they're not able to move around like normal kids move dioxide. around breathe in all that carbon dioxide. So this, and they went with children born um, July or later, last year, July. So it's absolutely horrific, it's wrong. Um, the threats to businesses, I remember when in, in Golden, they were the city council, I think it was the city council or maybe it was the health department, was going into stores while there were shoppers in the stores telling everyone, if you don't have a mask on, we will take away the business license. And this is what this is what happens in Germany. This is what happened in, and um, oh, the Nuremberg. I was thinking about the Nuremberg Just watched ruling. Just two nights ago. What did they say about the Nuremberg? Uh, well, no, I watched Nuremberg. Oh, Spencer, you watched? Spencer Tracy. Oh, the oh, movies oh, Nuremberg was, oh, it'd be good for us to go back and re watch some of these movies yes. because they were close to it. Um, the threats to customers, the threats to businesses, um, are to have just been breathtaking. Um, then on top of that, the card stock stacking, which is the censorship. You only get to know one side of the story. You cannot give a testimonial of what has happened to you, We're, unless it lines up with our narrative. Uh, glittering generalities, um, we use loaded words that access the positive emotions of the target audience typically glittering generalities and the use of slogans, stay apart, stand here, carefully selected be words. Safe. Be what? Safe. Be safe. Be safe. Oh, oh my I goodness. Ah. That. <laughs> I'm like, be safe. who cares? <laughs> you know, when they say peace and safety, yeah. watch out for sudden Good. destruction comes yeah. upon you. Care for your neighbors. You Care for your neighbors. Oh yeah, I heard a lady saying, oh my goodness, I know I am loving my neighbor by wearing my mask. I'm like, loving your neighbor, how is that loving? I can't protect my neighbor from sickness. They can't protect me from sickness. If I get sick, I get sick. I, it's just the, the, yeah, well, let's look at that scripture. Does anybody know where that's at? When they say peace and safety. I'll let you guys look and I'm just gonna start um, reading. Anyway, that's the propaganda. Let's. Oh, that was thunder. Glory to God. I pray that was thunder. We'll take it. <laughs> that reminds me of we were in fire camp uh, one night and uh, we had we had we were having a good night anyway. Um, I turned to one of the girls and we were giving her a prophetic, we were giving prophetic words. She was a girl that was just about to go to Nepal at the time. And I turned to her and started to give the word and boom, the transformer in the building blew. And um, 
<laughs> we finished giving the word and then I said, okay, now we're gonna line up and we're gonna go out of the building because we didn't know what happened. The firemen showed up and all that. Anyway, she was going to Nepal and then I was going to Nepal too. I went to Nepal that very same time. When we were in Nepal, um, it just so happened that one of the places we were at, and I'll just shorten this story a whole lot, but there were four lightning strikes. No, there were, yeah, there were four lightning strikes and four four or five types of, of participant, precipitation, rain, snow, hail, snowballs, and something else. But what happened, what we didn't know until the very next day was that they had never, they hadn't had snow in 14 years. So many of the kids had never. So whenever you have um, a lightning strike or thunder like that, especially if it's the only one, like all day, it's just an exclamation point from the Lord. Now we had four that day and I just so happened to turn to a young man and prophesy, give him a prophetic word and boom, you know, that's when the lightning started. So we, I just stopped and I said, first thing I said was, I can't make that happen because you know when preachers and women preachers preach <laughs> maybe I should say, yeah I can make that happen, but they would say it's something else. But God is the only one that can make that happen. And yeah. so we know that when there's an exclamation point from the Lord, he's, he know, we, we know he's saying this is serious. So especially when it's happened around the prophetic, it's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, first, the, the first word of God. Thessalonians 5, 3. First Thessalonians 5, verse 3. First Thessalonians is where it's at. Anyway, do, would you read it? Would you read, um, start at, oh, start at the beginning. Oh, I'm sorry. Hit myself. Keep watch for the day of the Lord. Now concerning the times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night. When they are saying, Shalom and safety, peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them like a woman having birth pains in the womb. There is no way they will escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in the dark so that the day might overtake you like go to the, yeah go to verse six or read six uh, for you are all sons, sons of light and sons of day that's we, right we are, are not, not of night <laughs> that's right or of darkness. darkness so then let us not sleep as others do but let us remain on the alert and sober-minded yes amen for those who sleep sleep at night and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we are of the day, let us be sober-minded, putting on the breastplate of faithfulness and love, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. Amen. For God did not destine us wrath. for wrath. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But for obtaining salvation through our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, he died for us. So that whether we may be awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as you are in fact doing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so that's what we're doing, and we are going to continue doing it. All right. So if they say peace and safety, watch out for sudden destruction. All right. Let's look at the Last Supper and the Marriage Supper of the Lamb. And we'll kind of go through quickly. There's all the scriptures that are spelled out here. So if you want to go in and do a more in-depth thing, you can very easily. Um, this is just explaining the Jewish marriage right off the bat. At the Last Supper, Jesus established the marriage covenant and, this, and sealed it with wine, a betrothal cup. In John 13, 2, the supper was the Passover meal. Now, um... When we do Passover, we really talk about this. So you were in the notes. We're in the notes. First, first page. First page. And supper being ended, for, it's John 13. Supper being ended, the devil already put into the heart of Judas to betray Jesus. Number B. I highlight three, let's highlight three aspects of the Jewish marriage here. The betrothal, the ceremony, and the consummation. 
When a young man desires to marry a woman in ancient Israel, he prepares a covenant to present to the young woman and her father to show his commandment to care and provide for the young woman. The betrothal, he proposed the bride price that he is willing to pay in exchange for permission to marry. In Jewish tradition, if the bride price was agreeable, the young man poured a cup of wine for the woman to drink to indicate that she agreed with his proposal. They were betrothed or engaged. A betrothal was legally binding, even though the marriage was not yet consummated. This is a picture of what Jesus did for us at the Last Supper. He offered the new covenant to his disciples as the bridegroom poured the cup of wine for his prospective bride to drink to seal the marriage contract. So Jesus poured a cup of wine. This declared to the bride price um, that he was willing to pay. And here's what it says in Matthew 26. As they were eating, Jesus took the bread, blessed, blessed it, broke it. He took the cup, gave it to them and said, drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now until when I drink with you in my Father's kingdom. We have this to look forward to. I'm always Amen. repeating that over and over. When a person accepts Jesus as their Lord, we're betrothed to him. The wedding ceremony, verse uh, F, this occurs in the sky when the rapture, with the rapture, when Jesus, the bridegroom, returns to receive his bride to be with him in the air, right? And mm -hmm. Second Corinthians says, oops, no, let's keep going down. Wedding ceremony in the sky when the rapture receives, prepared his bride to himself. Here it is, John 14. I will come again and receive you to myself. Verse, First uh, Thessalonians 4, 16. We're almost there. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven. Does, did we not have this? Oh, no. Oh, is, is one maybe stable to the wrong? No, let's start with three. I've got the wrong. Oh no! Oh no! I'm sorry. Do you have? Did you? Does anybody? Who does? Did you get number one? And you got number one? I have one. You have one. So you have only three. Here, let me see. I did have some extras. Here. Here's a one and a two. That's true. Okay. I need Hers is, says hers will be Israel. Can you two oh. share? Is there a possibility? I, 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 I've got one. You have a one? Oh, I'll share. I can I'll share. Okay. And then you can get That doesn't have to I'm sorry. Let me get back. this back. two. Everybody has one, two now? Okay, good. And then one, two, three, four. Here's another three, four. Anybody need a three, four? Okay, it's up here. And four, yeah. It'll be three and four. All right. Okay, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> okay. All right. So I just went through page one. And down at the bottom, where it says the wedding ceremony, the wedding ceremony is the rapture, okay? Because this is when we'll be changed to be like him. It says, I will, I will come to receive you to myself, for the Lord will, himself will descend from heaven. The dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive shall be caught up together to meet him in the air. The marriage supper of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. Now, I actually, 
Let's look at 1 Thessalonians since we're right there anyway. Let's read chapter 4. No, that gave all of it. Let me just say that the, the reason that the rapture is going to take place, and we will go through all of the scriptures on the rapture itself, okay? We'll spend time on this one day. But this is kind of a quick go through because we're seeing things happen right now in the Middle East. But the reason the rapture is going to take place is so that we will be changed to be like him. That's the number one reason. There's no other reason, right? Other than he's ready to take us with him to be changed to be like him. And we will be with him in the clouds of glory as he brings his final thing to the earth and brings his kingdom. He says, I will come with all of the saints, all of the angels. And so, do you hear me? All the saints, all the ones who've gone on before, those who are dead will rise again to meet him. Those who are alive and remain, we will meet him in the air. And we have a purpose. It's not like... You're just going to go in the air, and then you're going away. That was always my understanding of the rapture. You just go away. That's the end. It's not the end. It's actually the beginning. Right? We'll be changed to be like him. Wow. So what's that going to look like? And we'll talk about that another day. But that's a big deal. I want to be changed to be like him. Because Jesus walked through walls. He did whatever he needed to, right? You just have to think about it. He could go somewhere. He could be there. He could be on the road to Emmaus. He could do whatever he needed to do. I want to be changed to be like him. But that also means a lot of things. I'm going to be changed. I'm going to be different. Okay, but I'll still be myself. I'll still be known as myself. But I don't. no longer will we have to deal with the enemy. No longer will we have to deal with temptation. No longer will we have all of those things that we've had to deal with now. But then there's a great war there, and God is going to destroy wicked people all across the earth. And he's going to put Satan away for a thousand years. Okay? Then we have the millennial reign. Then we are going to rebuild the earth because everything that the enemy has destroyed, everything that wicked people have destroyed here on this earth, will be dealt with. That's a lot of work. So. People will remain on the earth after the rapture. After the rapture. People will remain on the earth. still have the opportunity to get saved? Yes. Salvation doesn't end. It will continue. We'll go through this scripturally because that's what we we really want to be convinced of. (laughs) Right? By the word. (coughs) All right. But the wedding supper of the Lamb. Go to page two now. Back that page. The wedding supper, after the wedding ceremony, at the rapture, the wedding supper is celebrated on the millennial earth because what's going to happen is it's going to be the rapture. Then you've got this 30 days right here where God, which are books here, sorry, here, right here, where God is going to destroy evil, put an end to evil like we read in Daniel, and then, then the marriage supper of the Lamb, then those... You know, blessed are those who've been called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Here's what Isaiah 25 says about the marriage supper of the Lamb. And this is the main scripture. So go to uh, number one after H. Number one says Isaiah 25, 6 through 8. Here's what the scripture says. In this mountain of the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of choice pieces. And he will destroy on this mountain the veil of that has been spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The rebuke of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. What a shocking day that will be, and that's the day we look forward to. These are the things we look forward to. That's why the tribulation seems like a big nothing burger, because we want to get over to the next thing. We want to get past those 1260, 1260 days and 30 days, and then we want to get to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Okay, the Father's house has many mansions or dwelling places. The new Jerusalem will descend to the earth. Now, this is in the millennial reign. 
In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. I come again to receive you to myself at the rapture. That where I am, you may be also. He wants to be with us. You know, I thought the Lord hated this planet for a very long time. That was what I had been taught. That's what I understood. God hates this earth. It's evil. Everything about us is evil. We've got, you know, the thoughts of the man have been wicked. But, you know, it's continually before the Lord. But one day I was reading through, and I can't even remember where I was. But I remember thinking, wait a minute. That's not true. God loves this planet. He created this planet. He loves everything about it. He wants to be here. And Isaiah 43 talks about when we cut him off. Well, he's going to come back. He opens that title deed to the earth. He's going to come back, and he's going to rule and reign here on this earth. That's what we're looking forward to. We, we say, well, look at all this bad stuff that's happening. Well, it's happening for a reason. What's happening in the Middle East right now is happening because it has to happen. And every evil thing that's been in play has to come to the end of itself. Hallelujah. Every evil thing that has been in play and every wicked plan, not only of the enemy, but the, of the Psalm 2 nations, where the Psalm 2 nations have said, no, we are, want to shake our fist. <laughs> we want to shake our fist at God. And we want to break the chains of God's commandments from all of our lives. Lord. Psalm 2. That's what God is ready to accomplish to defeat that. Because he's going to say, that isn't going to happen, guys. You can't. Remember, we, I hope we talked about this, where we talked about you can't not be under God's law. Any more than you can stop gravity. You cannot be, the earth begins to cry out and shake and moan because of the wickedness of man. The wicked cries up from the earth. Just like when Cain killed Abel. God said, hey, Abel's blood is crying out to me. Was it does. scripture about the all creation groans? All creation groans. I don't know where that scripture yeah, that is. But Romans. Romans, yeah, Romans all somewhere. Creation, You're right. All creation groans for, for the manifest. The manifest. Of the sons of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. So that's what all creation is looking forward to these days. Yes. Right? But it, it can't happen before all evil gets eviler. Right? Yes. If it can. We can't even imagine it getting eviler, but it will. And the things that we want to see come to an end will come to an end. Corruption, I just remember, corruption is corrupt in every single form of our government. I remember praying medic at the beginning, let's see, it was in 2020, or probably early 2020 or 2019, I was listening to praying medic, and he was talking about how the Lord was talking to him about things, and he said, I was praying about um, the occult and how the occult um, was at the top of every every mountain, the seven mountains, and um, and he said, I woke up one morning realizing and he was like, and the Lord said it to me, plain as day. Do you think that the Christians can just take back the seven mountains without me dealing with the occult that is on the top of every one of those mountains? And then he's like, well, duh. Yeah. <laughs> you have to deal with that. Yeah. You can't just go build your kingdom on top of evil. Right. Right? right. You can't set it straight when it's it's got its roots down so deep you can't just go in and try to set it straight people have tried to do that yeah. but it's so wicked that you can't shake it loose it's wicked and God knows that so God has to deal with it but he does it on his timing he lets it run its course and we on this side of it have to be the ones who are praying and filling those bowls we are filling those bowls with prayer. And uh, I'm going to International House of Prayer on purpose because they are have been doing this for 20 plus years, 24-7, 24 hours a day. And they are like, we're filling up the bowls. We get this purpose. You can go back and watch Mike Pickle 20 years ago and he knew it then and he, just as much as he knows it today. It's the same message. It's shocking. Yes, dear. So... Bible that we all 
I'll talk about that's coming before this great tribulation. God's going to give. Do you and is that going to fit in there? Yes, it's, it's going to fit in. Oh, okay, okay. So during this time, we're still going to have all this evil going on. I, I don't know. I guess I was thinking that maybe there'd be a, a pause. <laughs> Because I've thought about this a bunch. Because I have thought, will there be a great revival before this all begins? It's possible. But I actually think it's more possible for it to happen during the seven years. The reason I think that is that whenever there are is great evil happening, great good happens. There is something that runs parallel. Okay, so there's a very good possibility that there will that great um, revival will happen during that great tribulation. We, I believe, we will. Yeah, we're going to go through the tribulation. We very possibly would. The tribulation. Who's in charge of the tribulation? No, Jesus. Jesus is the one who opens the scroll. He's in charge of it. So if Jesus is, yeah, if Jesus is is um, dealing with evil people, is he is he persecuting you? No, evil people will continue to persecute the saints, like they've done since Jesus died on the cross. Because Stephen died, we've had martyrs all the way down through time, right? But we won't go through the wrath. We we here's the deal. Jesus will be with us during the wrath being poured out. He's here with us. He will pour out his wrath during this 30 days because he said, unless I do it in a short period of time, all all flesh will die. But we can't die. We've already been changed to be like him. Right? In this 30 days. If I'm raptured to be changed like him, then I'm not here. If you're raptured to be changed like him, you will be with him. Right? Yes. And so you will be with him even during that wrath because we're still going to be with him. We're with him one way or another. Okay. So if we go up before, okay. we're still coming back with him at the end. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to see that. Well, okay. Revelation 7, no, Revelation 6, 17, I know that yeah, we're going to tell this. Right. Yeah. It says, for the great day of their wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Yeah. That's um, pouring out of the first bowl, right? Which one is it? Are we in the... Uh, this is the four horsemen, the apocalypse, and it is the pouring out uh, when the Lamb opens the four seals. So he's going into the seals here. Yeah. So we'll do the seals, the bowls, or the, the seals, the trumpets, and the bowls next. Mm-hmm. So, but we wanted, I wanted to give you something encouraging before we jump into the really hard sure. stuff again. <laughs> because, because. During these things, while they're being poured out, remember, you already have the answers. You know what's going to be happening because you have the word of God. And so, and guess what? You know, there's famine in the land. Well, guess what? We're the ones who can multiply the food. We're the ones who can see signs and wonders happening. So we have to be ready and thinking, wait, I want want to be the signs, wonders, and miracles person. I want to be feeding my neighborhood, even if they don't like me. I'm going to feed them, and I'm going to take care of everyone I can take care of, and I want them to come to Jesus, because I want this great harvest to happen. That's right. All right? Okay. Because we want to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're not afraid afraid of any of that. You just want to know when it's going to happen. We just want to know. And it's not, remember what I said right from the very beginning? It's not about when. He returns. It's who. Yeah. It's it's his plan. Can I trust his plan? Am I okay with it? If uh, he if the tribulation starts, the antichrist is revealed, and then we know who he is, and the rapture doesn't happen. Am I going to shake my fist? I didn't sign up for that. You said you would come before. No, there's no scripture that says he's coming before the. And I've heard people say this. Oh, wait, these are pre-tribulation scriptures. No, there are no pre-tribulation scriptures. There are scriptures that we've formulated a doctrine from that we can say this looks like. But if the saints are here on the earth, 
and God calls all his saints into things on the earth, <laughs> I want to be a part of that. Okay, now if I die, if I go to heaven, glory to God. I don't miss anything. There's, listen, it's a win-win. If I'm raptured out, if I die, it's the same, right? That's right. Doesn't matter. I win. <laughs> right? <laughs> whether I go or whether I go. Whether you save me or whether you don't, Jesus, right? I will not bow down to your idol. <laughs> Old Nebuchadnezzar. From the beginning of our gathering here tonight, I have a picture. It started with Sandy speaking about the fire of God's love. But also, I just had this picture of the hand of God. And out of it is flowing the flames of fire. And we are in that fire. I mean, in the nations. The nations are going to be yeah. in that fire. That's right. And of course, that scripture from Daniel, you know, whether he does or whether he doesn't, spare me from right. the fire. We will not bow down. We will not bow down. And he... He is with us. He's with us. Amen. Regardless. Yeah. Regardless. All right. So, what's happening right now, go down to the greatest um, social miracle in history. It's page two. Isaiah 19 describes the greatest international social miracle in history. The descendants of Abraham, including those of Isaac and Ishmael together with Jacob and Esau, will be deeply unified. Now, this is what we need to be praying right now. And that's why we're talking about this today. We are looking forward to Isaiah 19 becoming the real reality of what's going on today. Now, we know, well, I'll keep reading. Abraham, including those of us, okay. The ancient Assyrian Empire included significant parts of modern-day Iraq, Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, other parts of Armenia, Turkey, Iran, seven Persian Gulf countries, Iraq, Oman. We have missionaries in these countries, okay? Just can I say that we support in this place, Kuwait, Qatar, uh, Qatar. I um, have been to Qatar. It's a very interesting nation. There are 300,000 citizens of Qatar, but something like 3 million, 2 million, maybe it's just 2 million uh, workers come in. It's like a slave nation. 300,000 people are citizens. They own the country. Two million people come in to do the work. Now, I want you to think about that. And when I was in Qatar, I spent the night in the airport. It's, it's a very Muslim nation. But you can buy uh, the biggest, fanciest Ferrari you've ever seen in your life in that Qatar airport. In the airport. They had a, uh, a a jewelry place the size of about two thirds of this room that was open 24 hours a day. You could buy diamonds that covered your the front of your bodice. Full diamonds, yeah. gold with diamonds. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in the airport. Okay, that's how rich, but two million people coming into work. That's an interesting thing. Okay, but this is what God has got to shake these nations. Think about it. They are wealthy beyond your wildest imagination. They come in and look at that and they go, I don't even want that. They're wealthy beyond. I mean, we think we're wealthy here. We are wealthy here. God help us, we are so wealthy. <laughs> but that won't shake them into reality. God will. So we need to be praying like never before because this is happening today in our day. Okay, here's what Isaiah 19 says. In that day, Israel will be one of the three with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing in the midst of the land, the earth whom the Lord shall bless. This miracle of unity occurring throughout the Middle East will happen in context to Jesus' return. It will be the epicenter of the Spirit's worldwide work of unifying God's people. Here's what John 17 said. 
because this was when he prayed for us. Jesus was praying for us. And he's, he, remember, he's praying for Israel, right? And the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one, just as we are one. I want you to think about this in a Middle Eastern term. We just think about it in our terms. That the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them. And here's what, number C, a blessing in the midst of the earth, the results of the release of the blessing of the Garden of Eden in Jerusalem, throughout parts of Israel, Egypt, and Assyria. Jesus will restore agriculture, atmosphere, the animal life to the condition seen back in the Garden of Eden, and he's going to bring it back to the millennial reign. This will be the epicenter from which the Garden of Eden blessings will progressively spread and fill the entire earth. And then the scriptures are go on to talk about how Israel will be provoked to godly jealousy. Go down to page four because at num um, letter I, that's about middle of the page, says the healing of Abraham's family will be the center. Who are Abraham's sons? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? And Ishmael. That's all of those other nations. 350 million Muslims, 8 million Jews, approximately. Okay? In that in those nations over in Israel and in those nations. But three do you think God is not interested in the 350 million? Do you think God is dealing right now with the 350 million? They're being shaken right now out of their whatever it is, right? Because we have our own junk. We can judge ourselves, right? <laughs> we want God to shake us too. Here's what we want. So I want us to be praying for the healing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Ishmael. We want the nations to love each other, to come together, Assyria, Egypt. I just want you to think, those Coptic Egyptian Christians, God bless them, the all of those ones, we don't ever see that over here, or rarely see that over here, but over there it's a major thing, and we want to see that healed. Those rifts that have been there for thousands of years, we want to see that healed in Jesus' name. So, there will be great hostility, we know, great hostility against Israel, but we believe that God is going to heal through all this. And those are all the scriptures. So we're going to stop there. But I just, I wanted to jump in there. I've never preached that or taught that particular segment. But I thought, I'm going to teach that today because this is what's happening and has the opportunity to begin now, right now. Out of all these years that it's been the same, the same, the same, the same, things are beginning to shift again. Now they shifted in 2000 shift in 2000 there's other been other things happen Benghazi we've had all of these other things happen but here we are again one more birth pain boom 2021 we're seeing another thing happen so father right now we lift up Israel first we pray for the shalom of Israel because we recognize that they are right now dealing with fear over um, is it Iraq that has uh, nuclear weapons right the, the, the news came out and said Iraq is days away or months away from having nuclear weapons. Father, we recognize they're dealing with fear. We pray, Lord, that your peace would be upon that land. We pray, God, that right now that the shield of your love would surround the people in, of Israel and surround that land. And we thank you for your protection over her in Jesus' name. You said to pray for the shalom of Israel. We, we ask you right now for the shalom. We also pray right now for those 350 million uh, Ishmaelites that are out there. Some of them are a mix. Some of them are from both. So, Father, we just right now, we lift them up. We lift them up. The little babies, the little children, the fathers, the mothers. Lord, those Christians who have persevered through so many things that are in that land, that are in hiding, wherever is going on, Lord, right now, we lift them up. We bless you, Lord, and we thank you, God, that you are showing up in the night in their dreams. You are showing up in the day in visions. We thank you, Lord, that you are showing yourself to be mighty and great. We ask, God, that um, now, 
as you move, stir up the hearts of the people that they will cry out for salvation, that their Messiah, their Yeshua, they would realize Esau, they would cry upon, cry out on it for his name to become their life, their savior. In Jesus' name, we thank you. He is their Messiah. Yeshua is their Messiah just as much as Israel's. So, Father, we ask just as much as ours. He's our Messiah, too. He's the whole world's Messiah. So, Lord, we cry out now for those millions, hundreds of millions, that they will come to see and know this Jesus that we love. In Jesus' holy name. And we give you glory and praise for what you're doing. Lord, we don't understand. We can't see. I can't go over there and know what's happening. But, Lord, you know everything. And we thank you and give you glory and praise that you're dealing with the hearts of the people now in Jesus' name. And we thank you that you said. Let's, I'm just going to read um, right out of Deuteronomy 30. It says, It shall come to pass when all these things come upon you, the blessings and the curse which I have set before you, and you call to them to mind among the nations where God drives you, and you return to the Lord, and you bring back from captivity circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart. We ask, Lord, that you would bring this love to them in Jesus' holy name, and we give you glory and praise, Lord, that they will not stumble. But, Lord, uh, we pray that they would have strong backs. Brother Brother Young would, said after intense... Pers- now, this is a man who was tortured with an inch of his life in China. Father, we just lift up China as well right now. Jesus, they're yours as well. You're, they are, you're, you are their Messiah as well. Father, you, Brother Yun changed the whole way that I pray for these people. He said, pray that we will have stronger backs to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, right now we pray for every one of those, um, the believers in China, in all of the Muslim nations. We pray right now that they will have strong backs to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ to that nation, to those nations down the Silk Road back to Israel. And we do believe for the greatest revival ever to happen soon. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' holy name.